Let's take a look at the implementation of the stream class that makes all of this magic work. A stream is a recursive list with an explicit first element and a rest of the list that is computed lazily. So there is a lazy computed recursive list. The first thing I'm going to define within the stream class is a representation of the empty stream, which itself is a class that has only one instance. And so we define the class with the name empty, and then we define an instance by calling empty and binding that to the name empty as well. So now there's no name bound to the empty class, only to the one instance of the empty class. And all this thing does is tell you that it's the empty stream. Next, we define the constructor of a stream, which takes in the first element in the stream, and then a function compute rest, which by default is a zero argument function that just gives you back the empty stream. We assert that compute rest is a callable object, meaning a function. If it's not, then we complain. Uh, we bind the name first to first. So this is an attribute that people should be able to look up whenever they want. And if they want to mutate the stream, they can change the first. Now what about compute rest? Well, it is bound to an attribute, but we say that this attribute is for internal use by preceding it with an underscore. Now what about rest? Rest is actually a property method, meaning when someone looks up rest, they're actually calling this function. And what does this function do? Well, it checks and sees if the rest has been computed already. So it sees if self.computeRest is not none. If it's not none, that means it's this function that's going to compute the rest of the stream, and it hasn't been called yet. So what we're going to do is call it and bind the result to another internal use name, self.underscore.rest. And then we'll just get rid of the compute rest function because we don't need it anymore. We have the rest of the stream, which we will return. Now, if somebody looks up the rest again, this whole aspect will be skipped and we'll just return the rest of the stream. So in this sense, we are caching the rest of the stream when it gets computed. So that if we create an example that looks up the rest of the same stream over and over again, that happens instantaneously. But we want to make sure that if we haven't computed it, we compute it just in time to return it. And that's the structure of the stream implementation. Now there's a pretty important reason why we use internal use names in this case. It's because we're doing some fairly complicated logic in tracking whether compute rest has been called or not by seeing whether it's none or not. Notice it can't possibly start out as none because it has to be callable at the beginning. Rest is an attribute that doesn't even exist on construction. It's added later. And so that's not something that we want to expose to people because it might not even be there. So all this machinery of how to compute the rest of the stream needs to be hidden away. It's the kind of thing that we might want to change and we don't want other people to rely on it. Whereas we always are going to know that a stream has a first element and has access to the rest via the rest attribute. So those are names that people should be comfortable using if they're going to create streams and manipulate them.